All right. Well, uh, we're excited to get uh, back on the field this Thursday night in front of our home crowd. It's a, another big football game, and we got to go out and try to find a way to win. I think our guys have played hard here recently. We've uh, worked hard to improve and get better each and every week, and we got to continue to stay on the same path. Uh, the team we're playing is very competitive. They lost five games by less than four points. They beat North Carolina on the road. Um, and they will challenge us. So we're going to have to play well, practice well. It's quick. It's quick turnaround. But I think our guys uh, understand uh, what's at stake. And, uh, you know, winning is, is, is very important. And we got to go out and, you know, win the football game. Jeff, watching your teams at Western Kentucky and Purdue, have you ever had a team – that running the football was such a huge component to what you guys do to lean on? And is it comfortable for you to kind of start with that running game? Well, I think uh, every team is different. You uh, analyze and evaluate who your playmakers are, make sure they get the ball, what are your strengths, uh, defense, special teams, offense, all those things. Um, you know, I think right now, um, whatever form that we've been using has been working. I just think um, – you know, not turning the ball over. Uh, you know, we had three possessions in the first half. That that rarely happens. Uh, so possessions are becoming less and less with the, I don't know if it's the time clock change or what, but uh, three possessions in one half is not a lot. So you you got to make it work. Uh, and we, we have uh, the last few games. So I just think, uh, you know, having balance, moving the chains, getting first downs, getting points, not turning it over is vital on offense, playing great defense, aggressive, getting sacks, negative plays is important, and, and being solid on special teams. And right now, um, you know, we've um, been doing something pretty well. We want to continue to build off that at the same time. You know, we worked a passing game. We worked a play-action game. And we got to make sure we're still uh, have the ability to be effective at that as well. Jeff, you said you liked this uh, defense from – from day one, uh, was there any particular uh, aspect or reason that, that this defense is really uh, – they're kind of getting pretty nasty now in the way they play? Well, I think we have good athletes on defense. Um, they like to play aggressive. We have really kind of the perfect mix of – we've got a few veterans that have played football, but really a lot more guys that didn't have experience. But yet uh, – they were hungry and they're out to prove themselves and you want you want that on your on your defense on your on your team uh so a lot of these guys are, are trying to make a name for themselves and uh you know help their unit perform at a high level um we'll continue to rotate multiple guys in there as much as we can which i think we have at multiple positions uh the depth has helped us not only keep guys fresh but when guys have gone down with injuries whether it be Temporarily or for multiple games, we've had the ability to adapt and, and pick the pieces up pretty good. So I just think, uh, you know, that and the scheme we're trying to run, I think, has gelled well together. And, uh, you know, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Yeah. With the quick turnaround, what are the sacrifices you have to make in terms of having less time to prepare um, and, and your biggest concerns without those two extra days? Well, I think we can adjust and adapt to that pretty well. Uh, you know, we, we try to be forward thinkers in, in, in what we do uh, and how we prepare all year and get guys ready, but yet take care of their body and get them the game healthy and fresh and able to go full speed. So I think uh, without question, it's a short week. We've had some physical games here. Uh, you know, the pads won't be on as, as much. It'll be a little more mental learning, but we will be on the field and we'll go through all the same scenarios and make sure that uh, – you know, we're not missing the boat on that at all, uh, and you have to prepare that way. So I think I just think we'll prepare, uh, hopefully, just as hard um, and just as long as we can without, uh, you know, um, banging guys around on the field and being physical in practice and, and try to get guys to this game uh, fresh and ready to play physical in the game. Jeff uh, uh, Garindo has really uh, upped his game the last couple of weeks, and obviously, you liked him when he was at. Wisconsin, and he's come in here, and man, he had a, a you know a, a, his best game. What did you like about him? And I, I asked the Virginia Tech coach. He said, "Man, we, we would have liked to have had him. We recruited him. He had a great game, obviously uh, on on Saturday. He obviously followed his blocks well and and did things the way he was supposed to." Well, he's a great young man. Uh, he's coming here and been a fantastic teammate from day one. Been very unselfish. Um, we feel like we're. We have some depth at the running back room, and they all play a vital role. Uh, of course, Jawar has made some big plays. He's very elusive. 
Uh, but Isaac's a different runner. You know, he's physical. He can run downhill. He'll lower his pads. He actually has good hands and good agility for that size. And as far as uh, straight ahead, he has really good speed. Uh, that is surprising to a lot of people. Uh, so when they try to tackle him and take an angle on him, they normally don't take the angle that they sh probably should have. Uh, so I just think uh, he's been hungry. He's healthy. He's out to prove himself. He's a really good teammate. He's fit in well. And, you know, we got to continue to, you know, feed feed those guys and, and get them touches and, and let them go make plays. Jeff, the home field advantage that that has been created here, when you coach here as an assistant in the, in this place, it's always been loud, especially on night games. But the this year it seems like that it is the energy, the buzz. Do you notice that? Do you notice the crowd? And is it an advantage for your guys the way it has been? Well, first off, uh, l and Cardinal Stadium is a great venue uh, to watch a football game. I mean, it's a fantastic venue, as good as anywhere in the country. Uh, so we take pride in that. Um, our players have loved coming out in front of our fans who have always been into the game uh, and uh, been loud and been vocal of wanting to win and wanting to you know, do great things. Uh, so if we can give that to them, they're even louder. Um, you know. They continue to, you know, uh, make a lot of noise and uh, stand up and, and and cheer on this football team. So I just think uh, all those things matter. Uh, if we can create a tremendous home field advantage from here until whenever, uh, it's a huge plus. And we've got to just continue to build that. I think right now we're in the process of, of, of building that to, to a level that we want, and we've got to stay on that path. But that's going to take – Good football play, teams that play hard and tough and smart and play to the end, and then fans that appreciate that style of playing football. And, yes, we want to win as many games as we can, but we have to play that style, uh, uh, a style that people want to watch uh, and, and want to come you know, pay their hard work money, hard-earned money to, uh, to be a part of, and, and, uh, and that will have to continue this Thursday. Hey, Jeff, you mentioned on Saturday there were quite a few guys nicked up after Duke, and obviously there was – game time decisions for some of them. How do you try and manage some of those guys on a short week like this and a quick turnaround? Well, it's part of the game. And, and yes, after the Duke game, uh, you know, we, we took some uh, some lumps as far as uh, guys um, maybe not being able to play and having to really deal with some things that have popped up. And um, they were key players. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to continue to try to still get them healthy uh, and get them on the field. Um when that'll happen with a few, I'm, I'm not for sure. Uh, some of them are day-to-day. Are -day, some of them may be longer. Uh, I think we got out of this game, for the most part, as healthy as we could, considering the circumstance. And there were a lot of new people that stepped in that were fresh, that did well, and that are that are continuing to, to be healthy. So I just think um, we'll work through it as much as we can. Every day is valuable. Um, but to our guys' credit, uh, even the guys that didn't play uh, have tried to get healthy as fast as they can. They want to get on the field. Uh, and some of them are suffering you know, some pretty good nicks and bruises and probably more than that. Uh, so I, I, I give them a lot of credit. Uh, they want to go out there and help their team win, and the other guys are ready in case they can't go. Jeff, the follow-up to the run game question. When did it become apparent to you that maybe you needed to tweak your offense some here and run the ball more? And um, – is, did you have any team that similar to this at Purdue that was this balanced or not? Well, like I said, I, I think, uh, you know, believe it or not, at Western Kentucky, um, one of our graduate assistants here, Ace Wells, who played at Central, um, one year led the nation in, in touchdowns. So uh, he was a running back. Uh, so we, we've had the ability to do that. But, you know, we've had good receivers where we've at. We've been able to throw the ball. Uh, it's about scoring points. Um, you know, when you're playing a high level of football, you, you, you've got to find ways to score points. We've had a few games where the deep play action shot has been very effective, and uh, we have some others where maybe it hasn't. So we've had a few games where uh, the turnovers kind of hurt us. And I just think it, it got to the uh, point where, okay, let's let's make sure we're getting points. Uh, so whether that's by air or by ground, uh, let's get it to our playmakers' hands. Let's try not to make very many mistakes if we can prevent it. Uh, let's be efficient in our drives. And I think the defense will dictate what we can do a little bit more of and not. And I just think having the ability to throw and run is vital to success. You can't be one-dimensional no matter what you think about it. Uh, at some point, teams are going to take away what you're doing well, and you have to be able to do the other. Uh, so um, we got to continue to work through that. Uh, 
but getting points and taking uh, advantage of uh, limited possessions is important, especially early on. When you can set the tone early on and get a lead, it allows the defense to play even more aggressive, um, you know, get after the quarterback uh, and the offense to be slightly more conservative and make sure we're not giving anything to the defense. And if our special teams uh, are solid, then it, it helps us hopefully win the football game. But like I said, that's not always going to happen. You know, we're not always going to get the lead. We're not always going to get off to a fast start. So when you don't, you have to be able to adjust, and, and that's what we got to make sure we can do. Yeah, you, you discussed the home field advantage. Maybe the electricity is nothing like the beginning of the fourth quarter when they're playing joking the thief. I saw some coaches <laughs> dancing, the players dancing. What's it, that done for morale, and when, when like, are you going to dance? Well, <laughs> after uh, – Watching a few of the coaches dance, we've had to pull the rope back on them a little bit. Uh, we don't want to embarrass our staff. Uh, but you know what? Uh, truthfully, the energy uh, that the fourth quarter brings, especially when the game's going the way uh, you want, uh, is is tremendous. And uh, I just think the fans are hyped up. Our players are. We kind of have to push them back to the sideline a little bit to make sure that uh, we don't step over the line. But, uh, you know, we want them to have that energy and that uh, juice and, um, you know, uh, we still have a lot more games to win before you might see me dance. Jeff, everybody has this this next man up mentality. You guys have kind of lived it, whether it's at running back, offensive line, defensive backfield, wide receiver. What do you think that does for the entire team? Well, we try to preach that year round that, uh, you know, there's going to be some starters, some backups, some guys that maybe don't play as much as you want. But at some point, uh, you're going to get on the field. And uh, when you do, you got to be ready. Uh, and if you're ready, then you're probably going to play a whole lot more. And uh, it's kind of the role of a backup quarterback to a certain degree where, you know, if you in- enjoy that backup role too much and you're not working as hard as you should as a starter, well, eventually it's going to catch up with you. But if you're putting in the work and the time and you're just hungry as heck to get that opportunity, normally you're going to take advantage of it. So I just think uh, we do play uh, – quite a few guys at a lot of positions. I think our team sees that. Uh, if guys can prove to us they're ready mentally and physically go in there and play and make plays and be aggressive, we're going to try to put them in there. And, uh, you know, we want to always be that way. And, uh, you know, uh, we got a good nucleus of guys that work hard, that want to win, that want to showcase what they're all about. We want to give them that opportunity. And, um, you know, when you face good football teams and you find a way to win, it provides even more energy and incentive to, to go out there and work hard. So I, hopefully we can build on that and even more guys can step up uh, in this near future when we need them to. Jeff, you guys have now had three home games where you haven't allowed a touchdown. Um, I ask this a bit tongue in cheek. How does it feel as a former quarterback to now be a defensive coach? <laughs> well, well, I tell you, defense can really uh, help the game go smoother. Um, and, um, you know, our defense is, is, is playing very, very good right now. And, um, um, each week they come ready to play. Uh, they've played aggressive. Uh, they've taken advantage of the situation, um, and they've done a really good job. Uh, and like I said, um, you know, every week is new. Uh, so as soon as you start thinking that this is how it's going to be all the time, then you have a slip up. So we have to make sure that the same hunger and focus and preparation is put in. Um, there's still a lot of season left to play. Uh, there's a lot to play for. Uh, but if you don't win Thursday, then, um, you know, that's a, a – you take a punch in the gut. We don't want to take a punch in the gut. We want to continue to, to push forward and, and try to find a way to win this next one, however we need to, whatever's working for us, and and uh, and continue to uh, to work our way through the season. Yeah, Jeff, you guys have won the toss more than you've lost it this year, and you generally defer and take it in the second half. Why is that your preference, and has that always been the way you've done it as a coach? Well, the one-sided coin we've gave the officials has worked very well for us. Uh, before the game, uh, I've never won the toss that many times. So every t- and trust me, when it happens, I'm watching, and it's amazing that we've won the toss as much as we have. Um, so we hope to continue to do that. But you know what? It used to be you used to always would like to take the ball first. It was a macho, manly thing to do. Uh, go out there, and take it down the field, and score, and set the tone, and do all those things. And while that's still true to a certain degree, you know what? Research uh, and our history uh, over the last 10 years uh, has shown us that we were probably wrong. <laughs> and um, there have been multiple games where um, whether it was the other team took the ball first or we won the toss and deferred, we have probably won more of those games. And I think it's really nothing more than 
uh, you know, nowadays, if if the other team gets the ball and you can stop them, you're at the advantage. You've already won the advantage. Uh, and that's kind of the goal. Our defense is playing well. They've played aggressive. We've gotten stops. Uh, and that has helped us win because now only do you have the advantage then, then in the start of the second half, you get the ball, uh, which, which creates an advantage. Um, vice versa, if you get the ball first, it's important to take it down and score. Now, we got the ball first at Pittsburgh, took it down and score, but we still lost the game. So, it, you know, it doesn't always play out, uh, but it is important you do that because they're going to get the ball uh, to start the second half. Uh, I think we got the ball first, or maybe maybe we didn't. We did? Okay. Uh, so I just think uh, we've just done it by research, and uh, we believe in our defense. We believe we can get that first stop and uh, hopefully get the momentum uh, to create some advantage. And, uh, fortunately, we've taken it down and scored after the last couple of games, and it's really kind of uh, set the tone early. So it's just kind of, I'm sure maybe in a couple of years, the, the pendulum may swing the other way, but right now we, we feel good about that uh, recipe. Kind of going back to talking about home field advantage, you guys have played a lot stronger at home, whether it's the crowd or whatever it is. What do you feel like has gotten you guys in that mode where you've been able to be so dominant at home? I think it's a lot of things. Yes, the home field advantage is big. Yes, the crowd noise is huge. Uh, the energy of the stadium is, is outstanding. Our players do feed off that. Uh, we, we like playing on a great service with great footing as well. Believe it or not, that matters uh, when you're trying to make plays and be effective. Uh, no matter what the weather is, you normally have a good surface uh, out here. Uh, and, and, you know, anytime you go on the road, I mean, it's, you know, you got to adjust your cadence you cannot maybe change the play as much you uh, could have a few more false starts than you want to uh, there's just a lot of small things that can go into it that will affect um, a couple negative plays happen that can cost the game and here with the noise on our side it can affect it the other way so it is an advantage um, we need to use it as an advantage um, and we need to make sure we're continuing to keep our crowd into the game because they can uh, definitely be a uh, a very helpful factor to, to help us win the game. Jeff, we talked a lot about the tight end position all year. One guy that I think gets caught, I don't think he, I think he's an H back is Dwayne Martin. His snaps have gone up the last few weeks and it appears it looks like a couple of touchdowns. He's the one kind of leading the way. He's kind of the battering ram. How has he progressed and, and what have you seen from him? Well, Dwayne Martin uh, has done an outstanding job. And I think maybe early on, uh, myself and us as coaches didn't recognize how valuable he is. So we've kind of sold him short early on. And uh, every time he's been in there, he has produced. He blocks hard. He knows the package. Uh, you know, he plays aggressive. He's more athletic uh, than we even initially thought. Uh, and we need to continue to use him in a lot of roles. So I just think uh, he's very valuable to this team. He's very unselfish. The guys look up to him. He's a, a quiet, confident young man that just plays hard but he knows his role he plays it well he understands what we're doing he doesn't have mental mistakes uh you know he's 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 very sharp uh and we got to continue to to use him more so i think you'll see him in there as much as we can um and uh, he's been very valuable and, and he's helped us uh, win a, win win a lot of games by playing uh as well as he, he's as he's has uh, uh and that's just due to his hard work and work ethic Hey, Jeff, I know this is your first year coaching Ashton Jawadi, but he's really taken a leap even from showing flashes last year to consistently producing. Just what has impressed you about his growth and his development this season? Well, Ashton uh, reminds me a lot of George Karloftis, who we had at Purdue, who was a first-round pick of the Chiefs. Um, kind of can play defensive end, but maybe move inside as well. Um, uh you know, he has that dual threat ability to do both, where he's a strong end that can, in our opinion, uh, play on the edge of the defense, set the edge, come off the line of scrimmage with power and pop, but yet has some speed and quickness as well. If you want to move him inside and create some, some mismatches, he can do that very, uh, very good also. Uh, he creates push. He's got quickness and agility. He understands football. He's... You know, he's really strong, doesn't miss practice, doesn't miss reps. Uh, I mean, he's just very durable. So I just think uh, – and he's played. So he's already played quite a bit. So he had experience uh, before we got here, and he's proved very valuable to this defense. Now, we, we, we rotate guys in there and try to keep him fresh as well. But, um, you know, he, he's a dominant player for us, um, and it shows up uh, every week. 
Jeff, if you keep going one and zero the next few weeks, you have a chance to play in the ACC championship. How do you address that with your team coming down the stretch of the season? Well, I think everyone reads and sees uh, what's out there on Twitter and all those things, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think for us, uh, it's simple. Um, you know, if you win and take care of business, then good things can happen. So we, we got to uh, come back off a short week and, and try to win this next football game. If we do that, then, then good things are still possible. But it's important uh, that we understand that none of this uh, can happen if you're not winning. Short week and as important as Jawar is to you, how do you manage that week? And do you maybe take some confidence from what you saw from Isaac, knowing that, you know, if you do have to rest him, that, that Isaac can – well, I think we want to try to get Jawar even more healthy, um, and we'll try to do that. Uh, you know, we used him some, but we were able to use other running backs, which which helped to uh, take the load off. I think, uh, you know, even uh, Jawar uh, enjoyed watching the other running backs play and, and do some good things, and he wants to win football games, so he's very unselfish. So, I, you know, we'll still try to get him ready as much as we can to play uh, this Thursday and, and see how he is. Uh, you know, he still has a unique ability uh, to make guys miss in the hole. He's very elusive, and we need – all the elements we can to win football games. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely go into this game trying to use everyone that we can at our disposal that's healthy enough to play.